you've been talking about in a high-end mentoring program that I'm a part of at the moment. And that's about starting and finishing and about how to be a finisher. You see, a lot of people are very good at starting stuff, but they're not very good at finishing it, which is interesting, right? Because for them to start something, they obviously wanted the end result to start it right, but then they never finish it. So why is this? Why do some people keep starting and never finishing? And why are some people very good at finishing? Well, I think for some people, the reason that they don't finish is that they just can't be bothered. I mean, honestly, once they start it, they see how much the hard work is and then the goal that they want is not to them worth the amount of effort and hard work that they have to put in. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine if that's that way. But for the vast majority of people who start stuff that they can't finish, they are actually extremely frustrated by their apparent lack of commitment. I mean, they want it really badly. They start something, but then they can never make themselves finish it. And they're exhausted, they're frustrated, they're angry at themselves, they're going around and around in circles. So why when they would really love to finish, when they would really love the goal, when they would really love the result, are they not getting it? Are they not putting it in? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to confusion. So first of all, they're confused about what they have to do. They're confused about what they should be doing. So therefore, they don't know how to finish. They don't know what they should be doing. But secondly thing is that they overcomplicate stuff. So they take something and then they overcomplicate it to the point where they can't finish it. So simple is doable. Complicated is interesting, but complicated does not make for easy finishing. So often the best strategy within your business is a very simple one that is just a rinse and repeat. And people think that the, the online gurus out there and the business people out there who have these very successful businesses it's because they're doing something very complicated, but they're not. They're just doing some, some simple system very, very well over and over and over again. I mean, success is 90% doing the same thing over and over again and maybe 10% creating new stuff to do. So you need systems in place to remove confusion from your processes and to create predictability instead. So the difference between starters and finishers is starters are very free flowing. They're, they, they're not understanding what their goals are or what, what it means to be done. This gives them doubt, okay, doubt on what they're doing and it means they're not 100% committed. Finishers are very strategic, they're systems people, okay? They're good at planning and they're disciplined and they have accountability in place. So how can you go from being a starter to being a finisher? If that's where you're stuck, if you're stuck starting stuff, continuously being distracted by shiny new objects and thinking, oh no, this is not what I need to be doing, it's what I need to be doing is over here now, and you're darting around, not getting anywhere, a bit exhausted. How can you stop that and become someone who is like disciplined and accountable and finishes what they start? Well, I wanna give you three main ways. So the first thing that you need to be able to do is you actually need to be able to define the finish line. So you need to know exactly what finishing means so that you know when you get there. So what this looks like, if you're doing a project of you've got something new, rather than looking at this project as a whole, which is overwhelming, you need to break that bad boy down into bite-sized pieces. You know the saying about the elephant? Well, that is the same here. And then each of those, those little bite-sized pieces becomes a mini project that when you put all those mini projects together is gonna give you the big project. But then you set goals for finishing each mini project, okay? And then you need to take it further and to define exactly what finishes that mini project means. So for instance, when I break down, if I'm creating a new course, and then the first, my first mini goal is to create the course outline, and then I actually define what does that mean? Well, that means working out the modules, the names of the module, and then I actually just get on a Google Doc, and for each module, I write out the content that I want to be in each module. And once I've done that, then I have finished outlining my course. I've finished that mini project. So you need to define exactly what each of these mini projects consists of so that you know when you're finished. So the second thing that you need to do to become a finisher is to identify the obstacles that are stopping you, okay? And there are four main types of obstacles. There are stoppers, habits, urges, and blockers. So basically stoppers are the internal issues that you have in your head. So the things that are coming up inside your head that are stopping you. And these may be very unconscious thoughts that you're having about whether or not you're worthy or whether or not you're good enough or whether or not you can do it or whether or not people are going to laugh at you. And they, they cause you to procrastinate. So I see people that I'm coaching where their fear of ridicule and failure is actually a major stopper that's stopping them progressing forwards. And therefore it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because they're failing because of what is in their head. 
The second thing is habits. So habits are non-productive habits that you have. So for instance, watching telly in the evenings, sleeping in in the mornings, things that you've got into habits are time stealers that you are doing, okay? Where you can take back this time and then apply it to what you're doing so that you can actually create the time in your schedule to finish something. Urges are things that they might look like habits, but they're actually when you, you are actually sitting down to work and then they're things that are taking you away from the work. So it might be your mobile phone going off and then you have the urge to pick it up and look at it. It might be a notification popping up on your computer and you have an urge to go and see what that is. It may be an urge to go make yourself a cup of coffee, even though you're not actually wanting one, but it's things that are taking you away from the discomfort of what you're doing right now. And that's really what these urges are about. You're in discomfort of doing this work. So you have an urge to go and do something else instead and then you end up wasting so much time that you could be just committing to getting it done. And blockers are external factors that are stopping you. So people, you know, your pets, your children, spouses, um, people ringing you, things like that that are blocking you from getting the work done. And often, um, you know, you, you have to actually put uh, boundaries in place with people, with your, your family and let them know how important it is that you get this work done. Because when you're working from home, people just seem to think that you're not working. When in reality, you, you need to get shit done, right? So that's what blockers are. So if you want to create a big business, you need to treat it like a big business now and you need to be looking at these obstacles that are stopping you from finishing and putting things in place so that this doesn't happen. Identify your urges, identify your stoppers, identify your habits, identify your blockers, and then work out how to get rid of all of that for periods of time. Now, it might just be a two hours a day which takes us to our third one, which is owning your calendar. You've got to own your calendar to be a finisher. You've got to own your calendar to have a successful business that you can scale. Now that doesn't mean working 14 hours a day. That means allotting time during your day blocks the time when you're going to work. During those periods of time when you're working, you are not being blocked or stopped or you have no urges or habits. You're like clearing everything mentally, you're committing to two hours of solid work and you're getting shit done. When you work like that, in two hours you can get done what it might have taken you a whole day to do and then you're free to do what you really wanna do, which is go spend time with your family, go, you know, go to the shops, go out for coffee, do what you really wanna be doing. If you get the work done, you can go and do it with joy in your heart because you know that you've accomplished what you set out to do that day. Once you're owning your calendar, that marries into if you know what finishing means, if you know what your projects are, and then you know exactly what consists of finishing that is so that you can actually set out what you're doing in these blocks of time, right? You can work out how many hours this mini, mini project is gonna take, and then you can block time in your calendar to get that done. And that's non-negotiable. You know, you can, you've got to sit down that time and get that done. I actually have a Google Sheet set up that I, I write down the project name, I write down exactly what finishing it means, I work out how many hours I think that's going to take me, and then I go and I, I plan that out, I block it into my Google Calendar. I have a special color for work blocking when I'm doing that. And then once I've done that, I set an accountability partner and I set a reward for myself, a date, a date of when it's got to be done by sort of reward myself for myself of what happens when I when I successfully finish that by the due date and I set a consequence for if I don't. So for instance, for my latest project, my reward when I finish it is I get to go for a massage. My consequence if I don't is I have to run, go for a run, which I really don't want to do. So this is how you become a finisher. You set systems in place and you become highly disciplined. You need to be committed to the actual process of growing your business and resigned to the fact that you are gonna to have to get discomfort to do it, to be a finisher. You have to know that the end goal is gonna be worth it. So if you know your life of what you want and you can see that you can get there by becoming a finisher and by having these projects that you can do and finish, then it becomes worth it. Now, if you think that confusion is one of your problems, if you just don't know what to do and you would love to do what I'm telling you but you just don't know how to put it in place, then that's how I can help you. That's how I help people. I help coaches set up the foundational framework of their online businesses so they know how to online market. They know all the things they need to be doing online. They know how to build out their business, how to attract leads, how to create social proof, how to build a business that they can leverage and they can scale. But you may be just at the point where you just need to know how to get clients. And that's where I work with you at any level. Work with you to get to know you and what you need right now. And then we build your system out, your foundation out based on where you're at and what your skill level is at now. So if you want to talk to me, jump on my calendar. So it's DonnaJoyUsher.com forward slash deep dash dive. So I can, we can get to know each other. 
I can see what your goals are, what your obstacles are, and see if I am a fit to work with you, to see if you are a fit to work with me, if we're right for each other. And then if we are, we can talk about how I can help you.